confidence, 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 confidence. All of us want it, many of us lack it. That was probably my biggest hurdle that I've had to overcome in the span of the last seven, eight years. I used to struggle a lot with insecurities and to the point in which it would stop me from doing the things that I wanted to do, right? There would be times where I would plan on going out with some of my friends, but because of my insecurities that I would cancel last minute or I would have all this anxiety because I didn't know if people liked me. I didn't know if I was doing the right things. I didn't know if I was attractive enough. I didn't know if people, all these thoughts were running through my head. And I think a big part of it too was that I didn't look like anybody growing up, right? I grew up in a community where there wasn't many Koreans at all. And I felt like I looked different. And so then I was treated different. And then I wanted to overcompensate. And so I would act out and I would try to, to grab all this attention to me because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be liked. I wanted people to, to pay attention to me. Doing that for so long caught me in a, in a very bad place. And now I look back and I think, wow, I can't believe I, I was like that. And I wish that I could have spoke to that person back then. I wish I could speak to my 13 year old self and tell him that it, it would get better, that, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, that there's things that we can work on. And really within the past four or five years, my confidence has blossomed. It took a while though. It, it definitely wasn't an overnight thing, but I really do believe that now I have the type of confidence that's authentic, that's real. It's not fake until you make it. It's actually something that I believe in. Like I believe that I belong in the room that I walk into. And I hope that after you watch this, that you'll have a really good foundation too. We're just gonna be talking about four things, but four really crucial things, four things that I really do believe is extremely important for you to take home. My name is June Yu. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Again, confidence is that thing that all of us look to have. We aspire to be like that person that can walk up on stage and give an incredible presentation, an incredible speech, or those performers, those singers, and you look at them, you're like, wow, that is so cool. Or those actors, and you're like, wow, how do they do that? How do they walk like that? How do they speak like that? How do they sing like that? How do they talk like that? It, it all just makes you feel like you can't be like that but I promise you, you can, but it works from the foundation. We have to build it from the ground up and we will in this video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. If you have any questions at all, if there's anything that I might've missed, please leave it in the comments, give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe. I wanna start off with this quote that says, confidence is having an undeniable stack of proof that you are exactly who you say that you are. And I think that that's really powerful because it talks about the body of work necessary for you to have the confidence in the first place. You see, I do believe that there is something to behind the idea of manifesting and saying that you are confident, even when you don't feel like you're fully confident. And the idea of fake it till you make it, I think is the advice that so many people give. And although I think it comes from a good place and although it can work to a certain extent, I don't believe it works to the extent that you want it to. It's not going to provide you that type of real authentic confidence that can take you from one endeavor to another endeavor one room to another room and you can still have that level of confidence. I think that type of confidence comes from actually willingly putting the work and that's tough. It's really hard to, but confidence really comes from actually applying yourself for a long enough period of time so that you can develop the skills, the expertise, the experience to say, you know what, I've done this and I have the confidence knowing that that's what I've done in the past, that it's probably going to look like this in the future and I have confidence in my abilities to be able to, to do it right. And, and that's really, 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 really important. And it sounds crazy and so simple, but really, if you think about it, if you say that you are somebody really good at academics, right? You, you think that you're an incredible student, but you're somebody that's lazy and you're somebody that doesn't get good grades. You're somebody that doesn't go ahead and, and partakes in the professional experience and in, in internship or whatever the case may be, because those things can be really hard and out of your comfort zone, but then you still claim to be a good student. And, and where's the confidence in that, right? If you talk about you being a good business owner and you look at your experience, you're like, yeah, I've gotten lucky here or there, but I've actually never put in the amount of time and work uh, to, to actually say that I've had a lot of sales, right? Or if anything, you say that you are a great soccer player, right? You say that you're a great basketball player, but you don't put in the hours, you don't put in the time to, to know exactly what it's like in all types of situations, right? You haven't gone through the rigorous type of work, the rigorous type of practice to say, you know what? I've seen these types of experiences 
experiences before. I'm gonna go ahead now and I know that I have confidence in my ability because I put in that work. And, and a great thing to think about is I used to watch soccer players growing up. I used to play soccer and I, I watched them on the pitch and I, and I would see them and think, how are they so good under the pressure of a million eyes, right? Like how can they perform at their very best when they have an entire stadium packed and there's people booing them. And it's this idea that they put in that work. Like they've gone into that with so much time and effort before the scene, before the actual event. And that's where the confidence comes from. So confidence isn't something that you can just sit on your hands and wait for it to come to you. No, confidence is something that you can go out there and take. Confidence is something that you need to put the time and effort into. Confidence is something in your control. And I think that when you can start to recognize that, it becomes truly freeing. Number two, and this coincides with the first one, but a high level of preparation, okay? I just came from doing a neuro presentation and I've done two now in the span of seven days. And these were really, really important ones. We're in a classroom filled with people that are doing this for their masters. There's people that have been researching this for years and it can be very daunting when you go up in, in front of everyone and present on your own research or things that, that maybe you have learned about and then try to make a proposal for it. And that's the difference, right? In neuroengineering, we're never just presenting on information. We're always presenting on information and finding a gap in knowledge and then providing a solution. When you do that in front of people that have been doing this for a really long time, your professors that are really, really, really capable, it gets daunting, it gets nerve wracking. And you see people go up there and they fold and they get really, really nervous and they can't get their words out and they're stumbling across their points and stuff. And it's so understandable. I totally get it and I empathize with them 100%. And then the last two presentations that I've gone up there, each time somebody has come up and said, wow, that was such a great presentation. You, you have such a great way of handling yourself up there. And in my head, I'm like, I was a nervous wreck. I am so scared of doing that type of public speaking. I know that I'm not one of the smart ones in that room, but man, I'm always freaked out. But yeah, Yes, I can still give a really good presentation. Why? Because I promise you, I've gone over that presentation probably a hundred times in my room alone. I've done it a hundred times with a friend on a call to try and get critique from it. I've done it 20 other times while recording myself on Zoom and then watching it back and seeing where I could fix it. I've gone through it and fixed the presentation so that there's a good slide up there that I know the flow of information. I don't have to look at the slides. I can just speak to the audience. I know that I've practice using my hand motion. I know that I practice moving my body. And that is so important because when I go up there, it's not my first time doing it. It's probably my 200th time doing it because it's my 200th time doing it. When I'm presenting for an hour long, I can do it. An hour long, it's a really long time to speak in front of people. But when you do that, you gain a level of confidence knowing that you've put in the time for the preparation aspect. You see, everyone gets nervous for whatever type of application that you're in, okay? And it just happens. Whether you're taking a test, whether you're playing on a game day, whatever it is, it's going to be nerve wracking, but the more preparation you can put in, the more you've mentally seen everything, the more you've gone through every little experience of it. And that when you go and actually have to perform that you're, you're able to, to the best of your ability. Look, I, I know that when I say that too, and I've talked about it to my friends about how much I was preparing for this neuro, cause they'll ask me, cause they've seen how, how good I am at these things. And, and I tell them I'm doing all this. And they're like, why are you taking it so seriously? Like it's, it's just, and I understand it's, I, I have, I don't, even do any of the stuff for a grade anymore. I don't need the good grade anymore, right? I'm about to graduate. Um, I have both my bachelor's and my master's. I'm gonna be at, as, at a dean's list standing no matter what. But I, I know that this is important because how much preparation I put into one thing, I'm gonna start growing that as a habit. So now I'm super prepared for every meeting that I have for my business, right? Every time that I go in there with my team, I'm super prepared because I know that every minute I have with my team members counts. I know their t time counts. So I'm gonna come in there with a high level of preparation. What happens? too, it's not just your confidence arises, but the confidence of other people in you arises because they can count on you. They can lean on you. They can understand that you're not somebody that's gonna come and have no idea what's happening, right? So preparation is a huge aspect of it. Mentally visualize what, what it is and then put yourself in the situation over and over and over again so that when it comes down to you performing that you're able to still do it no matter what pressure you have before you. Number three, self image. And I wanna caveat this by saying, I understand when I talk about your physical appearance, when I talk about my physical appearance, it seems superficial, right? It seems self-absorbed. When I talk about the fact that you should care about your hygiene, when I say that you should care about your body and fitness, when I talk about that you should care about the clothes that you wear, I, I want you to understand that it's because it's the indication of your own investment 
in you. What other way can another person look at you and recognize that you're taking yourself seriously? Because that's immediately what other people see, right? And if they see that, you know, you are in the clothes, not just because it's fashionable across the board for other people, and you're trying to please other people, no, but but that clothing that, you, that you're wearing, the style that you're wearing makes you feel confident and it shows. If you come in there and you, you've done your hair and you've put on um, the nice type of clothing and you've gone and you've, you know, done your skincare and you look good and you smell good and, and you look like you've just showered, like that, that all adds to a level of first impression, but it shows to other people that you're invested into you, right? Like you're willing to put in the time and effort into you. It's crazy how much we are so willing to put time and effort into other people when we can just put a little bit of that into us and it makes a huge, huge impact also on how other people treat us, right? Like how other people are looking at us. And it's so important because you only get one of these. Like I only get me, I only get my body, I only get my face, I only get my hair, I only get my skin and I, I wanna be sure that I can take care of it. And I'm telling you right now, when you've done that and you can look at yourself in the mirror and think to yourself, you know what, I've put time and effort here. I, I know that I'm not doing this just to please other people. I, I came in here because I know that I'm important and I've done this because I want to show to myself that that's the case. It, it has a lot of impact, right? It does. And, and it's all part of the same idea here. When we talk about preparation and when we talk about practice and when we talk about a body of work, that's all putting an investment effort into you. This is just our way to do it physically too, uh, physical to our own bodies. And I think that that's an important aspect of it. Do I think it's the most important thing ever? No, but do I think that it's something that all of us should take seriously? Yes, because we only got one of us. We deserve to be treated right, especially by ourselves. Number four, enhancing communication skills. This is a weird one. And I think that maybe the obvious part to this may be that when you're going ahead and presenting or something, that you want to be somebody that can articulate yourself well. But I want to take it a step further because I have seen this over and over and over and over and over and over again as a biomedical engineering major. I've worked in pharma. I've gone through these internships and I've seen this happen over and over again. I will be surrounded by the smartest people ever. I'll be surrounded by people that I think, wow, how is that possible? How do you know all of this? How are you so skilled? How are you so naturally able to comprehend this and then apply it and then do a whole experiment on it and then write an entire paper? What I've realized though is it doesn't matter how skilled that you are if you can't communicate your skills. Truly, it doesn't matter. If other people can't understand what you're doing, it does not matter. Because nothing you do in your life will ever be just yourself. You will always need to communicate it. Whether you're talking about building a business and you might be the person that, that wears all the hats in the beginning and you're the one doing everything, but trust me, when you go and try to market it, when you try to speak to you know your target group, all of that is conversation, right? All of that is communication. How do you do that properly? And, and the same idea is when you are in science, you can be so great at the work that you do, but if you can't communicate it aloud, other people won't know how skilled you are and other people won't be able to help you along with your project. Other people won't be able to hire you because they don't know that you're actually really talented, right? The truth of the matter is we have such short periods of time that we can vocalize what we do. When we're talking about interviews, what is it? Maybe an hour long at most or sometimes 30 minutes. That's all you get to really make an impression on someone. If you're able to articulate what you've done in a manner that's effective, think about how much of an impression that's going to leave on somebody. But think about how many first impressions that you have with people at maybe as co-workers or as classmates or as professors or maybe lab assistants, there's going to be such short conversation that you have, but if you can articulate the work that you're doing, you can really impress people and not just impress people, but then it, it makes them inquire more about you, right? If you can communicate to the point in which you can get other people interested in you and they ask you questions about you, man, man, are you gonna fast track your way to having a lot of success? I Again, we've seen this so many times because in my major, I'm surrounded by, again, by people that are always probably the smartest ones when they walk into a room. But there's so many times where it doesn't matter because they can't communicate anything, right? And sometimes it even has to do with the fact that they're so much running on this 100 miles per hour in their brains that they don't know how to lower that RPM to be able to speak to somebody that doesn't know what their work is about, right? They can't articulate in a manner that's efficient and effective. And when they try to, they get really frustrated because the other people can't understand it. I've seen this in my close friends
clients are just like this and we talk about this all the time. They'll get super frustrated when talking to somebody and I tell them, it's like, you have to have patience and you have to understand that people don't have that type of knowledge beforehand. Can you speak on it in a way in which those people can understand? And then if you can do that, you can really make your way through your professional career. You can make your way through your school with different lab experiences or different club experiences. You can make it through any type of entrepreneurial endeavor that you have. If you're able to communicate your work, you're able to gain feedback from other people. You're able to gain the trust of other people. You're able to build a team around you. You're able to sell a product. It's so important. And communication obviously happens in multiple layers, whether we're talking about verbal communication or written communication, all of it is really important. Uh, they always say that engineers are horrible writers or horrible presenters. And a lot of that happens to be true because they haven't practiced this articulation uh, part. They've only practiced putting their, their head down into the work and it's an incredible trait to have. But if you combine that with the communication, that's I think where a lot of the power comes. And again, I think communication is also something that you can always improve upon, right? I think my communication today is way better than it was four years ago, but I'm still not happy with where my communication is, right? I still do a lot of uh, practice run throughs. I still have to critique myself all the time because I stutter or I go on tangents or I can't make my point succinct or I don't know how to express my thoughts in a way that I, I want people to feel them and understand them deeply. And all of that is gonna be a part of that process and involving ourselves to be more confident. But all of these four steps are really important, right? If you can go through those four things, it was really simple, but they're all foundational. They're all things that you can pick up right now and work a little bit closer to, and you can have humility before it, right? You can look at people that just have this arrogance about them. You get turned off by it, right? Because they have arrogance because they didn't work for any of the things that they're talking about, right? They have arrogance because they were given the things that they've had. And now they're acting like they can do this and they can teach other people. And that's not an attractive trait to have at all. But if you can put in the work, right? If you can have the body of work, like point number one, if you can go ahead and have a high level of preparation, like number two, if you can go ahead and put the time in the gym. If you can go ahead and put the time with the foods that you eat and take care of your skin and take care of your hygiene, that's gonna take time and effort too. And then if you can go ahead and practice your communication skills on all fronts, man, does that gonna help you build that authentic type of confidence that I think we are actually looking for. If you've learned anything in this video or if there was anything that I missed, please let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe. We got a lot of really, really cool videos coming. Um, I've been falling in love with this process more and more. More. In the beginning, it was just harder because long form content is different than the short form content I was accustomed to. But but the community here has been absolutely incredible. I've been loving seeing your guys' comments and just being able to interact with you guys. It's the coolest thing ever to see somebody in the community help someone else in the community in the YouTube comments. So I love you guys and I thank you guys from the very bottom of my heart. So until next time, please take care of yourselves and I'll see you all at the top.